So I have gold and silver in my brain. And mm -hmm. back when I was 20 years old, I was working uh, 1,250 feet underground in the in the giant mine of Yellowknife, uh, Northwest Territories, Canada, for gold. Oh, wow. Uh, then I was in Africa doing the same thing for gold. What's your thoughts about, like, the economy? Like, a lot of viewers who watch my channel, we think we're due for a, a huge correction in the near future. Correction? And oh, boy, that's a nice word. One stacker on a journey to find silver. What's up guys, International Stacker here. I'm here with the world famous Blue from the Stewart Mine here in Paula, California. T -t Tell us a little bit about your mine, Blue. Wow, it's been around uh, for 101 million years since it formed. <laughs> I like that, and that's I'm almost, good. I'm almost that old myself. And then uh, it's been actually in operation for 161 years. Okay. Uh, very rudimentary for the first uh, decade or so became the number one lithium producer in the world. And then now it's world famous for the finest, purest pink tourmaline that's known to exist naturally in the world. So lithium, that's why I felt so calm as soon as I walked <laughs> onto your grounds here. Yeah, yeah. Now I did buy one of your bags and right. ladies and gentlemen, if you come here, what's the name of this business specifically? It's Gems? Gems of Pala. And I'm guessing they can find you online Gems pretty easy. Gemsofpala.com. Now my channel is predominantly, I travel the world. Been, we've been to 26 countries together guys nice. and I, I buy gold and silver. Um, so when I buy gold and silver, we're looking for like all the coins from the different countries, yep. rare finds, things like this. I noticed on your wall with your first dollar, you had a Morgan silver dollar and a yes. peace dollar. Yes. And I noticed some silver shot. Are you into gold and silver as well or predominantly minerals well, or? I, at one point I've manufactured jewelry. Okay. And so at various times, as you can tell, I'm, I'm a little over 21 years old. Uh, and so I've lived through some interesting times where gold and silver have shot way up in value and then crashed. Et 1980s with the Hunt Brothers and all that. The yeah, Hunt Brothers, yeah, silver yeah. thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Those Texas boys were out there. <laughs> and so, but the thing is, um, uh, so I have gold and silver in my brain. And mm -hmm. back when I was 20 years old, I was working uh, 1,250 feet underground in the in the giant mine of Yellowknife, uh, Northwest Territories, Canada for gold. Oh, wow. Uh, then I was in Africa doing the same thing for gold. And so, and then I've mined copper and silver. And we have the Kelly mine in New Mexico, which is world famous for, for, uh, for uh, zinc and, and lead and silver and gold and copper. So more of the crystallized versions of it. So I'm very familiar with, that's why you saw that stuff in there. So did you ever find when you were mining big veins or was it mostly taken out and you'd rock crush it up and then they would well, find gold, it later? Well, gold, a lot of cases uh, forms with quartz. Right. And so I've seen some big quartz veins. And in one case that really comes to mind was it uh, at a uh, mine that I was working in the far north in the Arctic, another one, um, where you could actually take your miner's light, put it right up against uh, uh, some quartz. It was semi-crystalline quartz, fairly transparent in places, and you would see little leaves of gold back inside wow. the quartz. And it was a very mysterious, wonderful thing to be underground in the dark and put the light on this quartz, like putting a light into the water of a deep well and seeing the gold that's in there. Now, would you ever find gold forming around any of, the, of this type of stuff, or, or, or no? No, it's... Uh, most of the elements in the pegmatites here, pegmatite is a term, it's the mother of most colored gemstones, pegmatite, P-E-G-M-A-T-I-T-E, -E, pegmatite. And pegmatites form of lighter elements. Uh, you know, we, we know what hydrogen and helium are like. Mm. They, you put them in balloons and they're so light they float. Mm. Well, the third element in the periodic table is lithium. Mm. Lithium in its solid state is barely, uh, barely able to stay on the ground. It's very light as well. Interesting, okay. And so is, so is boron and so many of the other elements that form uh, these crystals are very light elements. And so you generally find that, not always, generally find that in the earth where you'll find the heavy elements coming out in one place, the light elements coming out in others. In some places they're mixed up, but that's because of geological upheaval. 
Now, what's your thoughts about like the economy? Like a lot of viewers who watch my channel, we think we're due for a, a huge correction in the near future. Correction, and, oh boy, that's a nice word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, basically 2008, we kicked the can down the road. Yeah. So my question for you is yeah, like- Yeah, print money, yes, yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah, printing money yeah, into oblivion, yeah. yeah. And, and that's what uh, C C C Cecilia would do when she sent me up to the office to get uh, sm smacked on the wrist for being a bad boy, was a correction. There, he did a correction. There, so the question for you is, now traditionally gold and silver have done well holding their value during that time. You know, initially they tend to dip and then people will put their, their money into it to protect, protect against inflation, things like this. What's your view on gemstones? Do they kind of act similar or what's your thoughts there? Well. We've got to look at intangible and tangible commodities. We've right. got to look at what we're dealing with, especially with, with cryptocurrencies. Yep. Cryptocurrencies are nothing but a bunch of algorithms and uh, formulas and constantly changing, changing codes. And in actual fact, when the truth comes out, they're sucking up vast amounts of electrical energy and taking oh, yeah. up huge amounts of internet space yeah. and growing every day. Yeah. And at a certain point, they're going to overwhelm things mm. um, because it takes a huge amount of energy to keep these things 10 steps ahead sure. of the people that are trying to hack them. Yeah, okay. And, and one, one of these days, somebody's going to hack them. And then that's going to be a big bonanza for them. Yeah. Uh, and so there's, there's different levels of what I call abstract investment commodities. Sure. And abstract means that these are stocks, bonds, speculative ventures in, in real estate that you never actually built anything on or even sure. seen in reality. Sure. And so these are the mind produced on paper, uh, sounding very legit. Even currency itself mm -hmm. is paper. And so when you're dealing with actual commodities, solid commodities, you're dealing with real land that you own, you're dealing with food, you're dealing with energy products such as oil, and you're dealing with gold and gemstones and anything tangible. Sure. But some of the tangible stuff fringes, like if you get into certain artworks that could be a good investment for one person, then there's a war or there's a fire and suddenly that's lost. The problem with tangible commodities, solid things like gold and silver and, and gems is disaster can wipe them out. A True. thief can break in and steal them. And yeah. when you've lost those, then you gotta go to the intangible thing, the insurance company, and convince them of what you've lost. Right. However, most people don't lose those things. Yeah, yeah. Most people keep them and hand them down. And one of the great things about tangible commodities like gold and gemstones and beautiful objects like that is they may mean a lot to you and you may love them for their value, but maybe your great grandchildren will feel your presence in you handing down an incredible sapphire mm. or a beautiful tourmaline or a, go a, a, a big bar of gold or just some coins. Something from you that's passed down is usually never thrown out. It's not anything you eat and throw away or right. anything like that. This is valued on many different levels, not just the financial level. And transferring your mind out of referring everything to paper money is a good idea. Look at how much gold is worth or a gemstone is worth in what the average salary is oh, yeah. and how that relates, how that changes, or what a ton of rice costs right. or what a, a gallon of gas costs. Keep your, your values because you'll notice it's the paper abstract intangible assets that are fluctuating. Right. It's not gold and food and gas that's fluctuating. They're solid. Right. And so if you think about that, where you want to hide your wealth, uh, what is solid and what is not? Right. You can really look beyond the hype because there's lots of news media people out there. Uh, I think they've got something called advertisers. Oh, yeah. And you'll yeah. notice they're Oh, you companies. mean they want you to click on things <laughs> yeah. and then buy things from them? That's right. <laughs> so, so the real thing is the best thing. Well, I'm with you. And one thing we say on the channel a lot is if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And funny enough, I got my start in cryptos. I was in Saudi Arabia as a contractor. Mm -hmm. So I got free power. Okay. So I got some Bitcoin miners from China and I was mining them when they're like $400 a coin. I got a buddy of mine into it and he was into gold and silver, what we call stacking or stacking silver. Sure. And he got me into that at the time. I'm like, wow, 
And that really opened my eyes. So I took a lot of my, you know, value had built up in cryptos over the years and transferred it into gold and silver because you hold it, you own it. It's something with thousands of years of history. And if the internet turns out or if you get EMP'd or whatever happens, you know, you yeah, don't have to rely on that, right? Yeah. Found some stuff. I'm pretty sure I might have just maybe made a million dollars. I could be wrong. <laughs> so let me pan this camera I down. Hope so. I have a couple specimen bags here. If you could tell me what I found, how common or uncommon it is, and just your thoughts about it. So here's one. Wow. And some of those are black, some of those are greenish. I'm gonna bring out my little pin light here. Okay. Which every rock hound should have a pin light and a little uh, water squirt bottle so they can oh, get yeah, stuff there wet. You go. Look at the, these are nearly all green, my friend. These are just, a, there's one or two darker colors. These are all very nice green tourmaline crystals, single natural green tourmaline crystals. And what people are doing these days is wire wrapping one end of the crystal and matching them up so there's pairs of them and making earrings, simple wire wrap with silver wire, maybe five bucks worth of work in silver. And you know what? They're being sold for up to $159 wow. a pair online. So. This is what people want these days. The younger guys, they want the energy crystals, the mm. healing sort of. Yeah, I've been to stuff. Sedona, so yeah, I know what you're talking you about. Yeah, there yeah, you yeah, go. Yeah. So, so they want it natural. They don't want the faceted stones so much or the cut material. And this is what you really score. And the here. longer, the better, right? With these things, I I think so. Although good color really helps too. I mean, look at that. And do these? Do you want these kind of like with smoky quartz? Do you want them terminated or do they not? Yes, like yes. double so terminated. Termin Termination yeah, yeah. usually like the terminator, it means the end. I'll be back. And yeah, <laughs> and so the termination needs to be there. And the interesting thing is tourmaline has two types of termination. Okay. One is a prismatic or pyramidal termination. Huh. The other one is a basal pinacoid termination. Okay. And you can look those up. But uh, one comes to a point like a quartz crystal. The other one's a flat top, sort of like a buzz cut on a, on a crystal. Okay. So uh, wonderful, nice stuff. Now I found some other oh, kind of no, colors man, here. You're cleaning me out here. Oh no! Oh, man. oh yeah, that's our pink right there. And look at this green and and this pale pale blue. That's that's beautiful. And the beautiful. pink is the famous one here. That's right? the famous one. Look at that color. It glows. There's something about our pink. Maybe there's a tiny tiny touch of magenta in it or something. But it really is a powerful pink, and it's wow. world famous for that color. And you got some other little chunky bits there too. Very, you you did. I got some kind of no rocks here. No way more. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Guy is cleaning me out here. So that's black tourmaline in in uh, feldspar right here. I like that. Yeah. That's a bigger there. quartz crystal right here where my thumb is. And down here we have the purple lipidolite, kind of the more coarse grained, uh, flaky stuff. And that's the ore of lithium. And a lot of people love it as part of that new age uh, crystal mythology ah, there you go. kind of thing. And uh, the lipidolite is supposed to heal your heart from. You know, and I, I've needed that several times. This is mica, my right? Is that what that is? It sure is. Yeah, I it's mica. Cool. Yeah, yeah, those those are what we call books of mica, okay. because if you take these books, these little slabs of mica, and you can patiently peel them off, it'll peel off like pages in a book. Oh, really? So they're stacks of very very thin crystals. That's really interesting. Well, sir, I've appreciated the conversation, ladies and gentlemen. The world famous blue. Where can they find Blue you? She blue Shepherd. Where can Gems. they find you? gemsofpala.com g-e-m-s-o-f-p-a-l-a.com or just blue shepherd and fortunately you won't find me on america's most wanted or fbi's nah. most wanted or, or robert stack uh guys i'm i'm uh, i've been so too deep underground for them to catch up <laughs> there you go so, well i appreciate it sir and guys ladies well and gentlemen done. i'm well gonna done. give away some of these to you watching so Get ready for the contest that that's coming. That is meant to be worn as earrings. Well, uh, I appreciate it. I guess I'll say catch you on the next one. One stacker.